Okay, it's recording. Uh, welcome to GUI and Inware Browser's bi-weekly call for the last of June 2020. Uh, yep, we got uh, regular folks, we got uh, new old folk. <laughs> so uh, it's an interesting week. Um, Oli is our note taker and I've put some items on the agenda and I will quickly uh, jump to, straight to that. Feel free to add your own uh, agenda items while I'm struggling to share my screen. Hopefully this works. Okay. Has anybody figured out a way to not have Zoom go into full screen mode when someone shares their screen? That's so annoying. Yeah, I think you can turn that off. I turned it off ages ago because it's so annoying. There's a checkbox for everything. In, yeah, yeah. Feels like Microsoft Windows. There's a checkbox. But, but you've everything. achieved it. So if I look I, for it, okay. I'm not in full screen right now. It's possible. Okay, great. Wow. Humble brag. <laughs> I'm not in the full screen. <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, it's the end and the beginning of the quarter. Um, and we are now a working group. So as each working group, we prepared some OKRs, which are objectives and key results. We have a limited bandwidth and some uh, cross uh, working group priorities, uh, which we had to include in our planning. So uh, there are two uh, main topics for Q3. One is integrating pinning services into both uh, our web ecosystem and our GUI graphical interfaces, namely IPFS desktop and web UI. And then uh, even though we are in a new working group, again, uh, we had a lot of ongoing collapse and grants and work that needs to continue. and uh, that's uh, the result of uh, prioritization. So pinning services will be something that we will add to our ecosystem in Q3. And uh, this working group will focus on implementing user interfaces and helping to uh, orchestrate entire uh, API spec uh, to be finalized and agreed across all stakeholders. And uh, those stakeholders will be not just pinning services themselves, but uh, our core implementations. Uh, so if you go to core implementations, uh, uh, OKRs, you see they also have um, pinning services on their list. So that will be partially uh, joint venture. Partially, uh, we will provide a list of requirements and uh, quality assurance. Um, but, uh, the end result is having pinning services in web UI and IPFS desktop uh, integrated and working with at least two collabs, uh, depending how uh, our partners' uh, uh, timelines, we will have two or more uh, uh, pinning services ready um, to be used by our users. Uh, but everyone will be capable of implementing the vendor agnostic pinning service API. Uh, so we expect the system uh, growing and there will be always option to add your custom um, pinning service. So even though it's not like listed on, those uh, on the list of default uh, pinning services, you will always be able to specify your own. Uh, and we, as a part of uh, that work, we've extracted um, uh, a bunch of Iraqis expertise on uh, web performance and low level optimizations. So uh, it's under uh, maintaining and improving uh, as bandwidth permits. We will ship those libraries for sharing IPFS node across browsing context. However, from that work, uh, we've extracted uh, P0 to improve uh, import of huge files uh, using web UI. Uh, that will be useful uh, because if people want to use pinning services, they should be able to import huge files into their uh, local nodes. Uh, and the second PR, uh, P0, uh, 
apart from pinning services is Brave integration. Uh, Brave will um, implement uh, embedded, uh, they will implement uh, our native URIs and that those will be backed either by a public gateway or user will have an option to opt in into running embedded JS, uh, embedded Go IPFS node. So that's a really exciting uh, development in this quarter and will be uh, mostly providing uh, user support, but if there's anything uh, blocking them uh, security wise, or if there's like a feature missing from Go IPFS, we will have to block some time to uh, help that collaboration. Uh, everything else is on the best effort uh, basis. We may prioritize uh, things related to a long backlog of UX related issues, um, namely because it's sort of related to uh, supporting Falcon launch and uh, pinning services as well. Uh, our GUI applications are often the first thing that people see when they Google IPFS and they want to try it. So uh, even though it's, it may not sound uh, very, uh, it may sound vague, but it's very important to remove uh, low, level, low level hanging fruits, all the paper cuts in the onboarding of new users. Uh, we expect an influx of uh, various types of new users uh, relate that influx will be related uh, to uh, integration of pinning services, but also uh, Falcon launch. Uh, so that's something we'll probably prioritize here. It's a P2 right now, but we'll increase it. Um, for everything else, uh, there are links to very detailed issues uh, on this column. I'll probably stop talking now. If I missed anything, Jessica, feel free to. Elaborate. You might as well might as well put the link in that um, uh, issue triage to our Zen Hub board because then folks can can look through that. And then the other note on that being like so super vague is a lot of this is really just going to base on triaging the highest priority things in that backlog with the caveat on who is available skill set wise to be able to do that work. So, you know, it may not be a complete priority order. It's just based on <laughs> a combination of priorities and availability of skills. Yeah, that's a good idea. I've added link to Zenhub board. Um, it's not a link, but I will make it a link at some point when I figured out uh, Google Docs, how do they work? Um, yeah, so that's our OQRs. Uh, those are like not 100% uh, finalized, but uh, that's the general direction. Uh, pinning services, uh, P0, uh, break integration, P, uh, P0, uh, and then uh, uh, sharing nodes across uh, browser context and the backlog will be around P1-ish. Um, Speaking of pinning services, <laughs> uh, so the next item is uh, pinning services API spec. Uh, it's something that I kicked off uh, quite recently. So uh, for web UI uh, to integrate pinning services uh, into our inter user interfaces, we uh, need to agree on how that pinning will happen that's something between us and Go IPFS and JS IPFS. However, uh, the backend API should be vendor agnostic. So that final API where you send a CID of the items you want to pin, uh, it, right now each pinning service provides uh, their own API, uh, but we want to agree on a universal pinning service API that every, browser, uh, every pinning service um, provider implements. And that way we uh, just implement client for that in web UI, in Go IPFS, JS IPFS, uh, make it available from our com command line, HTTP API. Uh, so there's a repo for that work. Uh, pinning service API spec is very, uh, it's a very early draft. Uh, which uh, the current version is just imported uh, uh, 
YAML from uh, older discussions uh, from IPFS nodes issue, but we plan to finalize this API within the next two weeks. So the timeline is a bit uh, aggressive. Uh, however, the API surface is not that big. It's effectively just uh, a few endpoints for, uh, I want to pin this CID and I want to check status of this CID. Uh, and then what is the status of my pins? And that's more or less uh, it. Uh, so we started discussion in issues. Uh, feel free to participate, feel free to ask questions. Uh, the sooner, the better. Uh, we want this to, the, the surface of this API to be very, very small. And we don't want to be too detailed when it comes to access controls. And uh, uh, we don't want to force uh, pinning services to implement too much. So it will be very, very small surface uh, a uh, very small API that we all can agree on. And then uh, that will be like a, uh, the, the, the low level primitive that will build all the uh, user interfaces, uh, all the integrations in user interfaces. So uh, that happens in parallel to our uh, web UI work, but we are sort of blocked without this we are not able to ship anything so uh expect update on that within two weeks i'd say um yep the uh, the um is the end user experience of that essentially web ui or desktop gets gets a drop down that says please use this I... as my preferred preferred pinning backend and Glad you asked, Ollie. I sent you. I sent you off channel um, on PM because everybody else has been through these. <laughs> um, but we can also walk through them. Ah, do you do you have them handy, Lytle? Oh no, I'm I, I'm just very fast at typing. <laughs> okay, this is like a cooking show. Here's one we made earlier. Um, so there's there's two flows. It's one is in the settings screen. The other one's in the file screen. Um, these were actually iterated on and there was a certain degree in the pinning summit. Um, they're, they're real straightforward though, real, real straightforward. It's not that easy to find it now. <laughs> they're inside the subsidiary. I was, I was like super impressed. I'm, 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 running, I'm running Figma desktop app, so I don't have those in my uh, address bar. <laughs> but um, I mean, if you wanna walk through them real quick, we can. Yeah, I, so have I think it, it may be useful to uh, provide context. Um, yeah, yeah. I actually, I actually have them open now. I can share my screen. Uh, okay, that may be. If better. you want. All right. Let's see here. Uh, where are you? All right. Um, give me a second. Share screen. Share screen. Come on. There we go. Can y'all see that? Yes. Oh, cool. All right. So this would be the settings where this lives in settings. Um, as you see, it's just another pane in the settings. Um, explains a little bit about pinning services are, since this will be the first time that anybody um, who doesn't know this exists will encounter it. This will be the first point of contact. So we want to give them a little bit more explanation. And then also, obviously, a link in the docs that blows out that a little bit harder. Everybody is always going to have local pinning, obviously, as a default. Um, and then you can add more. So you add services. It's pretty simple. This is sort of an initial state while we've only got a few um, pinning service providers on this boat. So it's a little bit like a logo parade right now. This is sort of an initial state to say, you know, here are the first couple of collabs. At some point when we have a bazillion of these, that will change a little bit the, the actual look and feel of this logic. It might end up being a searchable list or something like this. Um, you've also got the don't see your pinning service provider, add a custom one, share that in a sec. But real simple, just Here's the service. You can give it a nickname because you might have, say, two Infura accounts. You might call it Infura 1, Infura 2, or whatever, um, work and home, or who even knows. Um, so you can give it a nickname. You give it your API key. And then this guy here, um, this is sort of dependent upon the functionality that we launch with. But in an ideal state, you'd have some auto upload parameters right here that would give you, um, I'll show you those in a sec. Also, an escape key to go to the pinning services website if they want to offer more one-on-one -on -one help specific to their service. 
if you add a custom one, it's virtually the same thing, um, except that you need to give it an API endpoint as well. Um, this is what it looks like with a couple of pinning services added. Notice, so this is, this is an example of all the permutations of the auto upload rules. It would either be, and again, this, this may or may not happen depending on you know, pacing and what users want, but this is sort of an, an ideal situation. Auto upload would be all the files. It might be none of your files, or it might just be things that you pin to your local node only. Um, you can edit a service. Uh, if you hit the edit button, it goes back to the config modal I just showed you. You can visit the services website or you can remove it. Um, removal and changes, you can, you can change the rules if you go into the config and you change from one set of rules to the other, but we have to be very careful about the language that you use. You know, here's an idea saying, what if, you, what if you went from everything to just pins or, or the other way around? Um, so if you've gone from nothing, so say you went from nothing to pins, we want to ask you, all right, do you want to, do you want to only pin things, do you only want to pin to Infura or Textile, things that you pin in the future to your local node, or do you want to upload all of your local pins? We want to ask them that. So there are a couple of sort of escape, escape confirmation, get out clause questions um, when you change a pinning rule that we'll need to account for. Um, you know, here's another example, going to all files. <laughs> Um, do, you, do you want us to upload everything now or just everything that you add in the future? Um, yeah, so these are a couple of these exceptions, including if you disable. <laughs> um, and then also, to make it super clear, if you remove the pinning integration entirely from, from your, your desktop or web UI, you know, we, we want to say removing this pinning service isn't going to take the files off that service. You just won't have that service in, in your dashboard anymore. Um, I believe that's probably, that's probably good enough for now. Um, oh, and then just some status confirmations. The other half of this, which is currently blocked by the Zoom sharing thing at the top of my screen, let's try... This. Okay, cool. Um, file screen. You've now got a pin status column here that's going to tell you is it locally pinned or is it locally and cloud pinned. There may be circumstances under which it is only cloud pinned, such as you disabled an integration. Um, this is, again, sort of an exceptional case, but we're allowing for that. Um, we talked about the idea of having, if it's possible, a loading animation while a file is being pinned to a, a third-party service. If, if we do end up implementing some of those manual pinning rules um, that I talked about, so you, you can invoke any of this stuff with the uh, three dots, the right-click menu, um, and this turns into a set pinning option rather than a pin and unpin because it's, it's a bit more granular of a choice. Um, ditto here um, for multiple select files. And forgive me, I, I haven't seen these in a little while, so I'm not talking through these with complete fluency. So say, so say um, both from either this multi-select scenario or a right-click single-select scenario, and you hit that set pinning, you get a modal that'll pop up that says select the services with which you wish to pin these files. So say this person's like a superpower user and they have six pinning services, including one that they made themselves. Um, so you could have manual granularity over um, what you pin where. Again, this is really dependent. You know, this is sort of advanced functionality. This may, may not be MVP stuff. Um, if you don't have that level of rules, if it's just manual pinning or if it's just automatic pinning according to rules, this is real easy. This just goes back to the pin unpin scenario. And then for visibility, since you can't tell by using that right click menu and invoking the custom pinning rules, we need to let somebody know which services it is pinned to. So maybe you had like a global rule and then you, so on one service and you have nothing on another, so you might end up with, this is pinned to your local node and it's pinned to Pinata and Textile, but it's not pinned to a tournament in Fira. You would learn that by clicking the pin status in there, in, in the, the pin status column. Um, and then again, some confirmation messages, files pinned successfully, or 
this is this is going to be sort of a very it's it's a fairly vague error, but it's going to account for a lot. It's because most of the things that are going to go wrong is there's something wrong with your config. Maybe your API key changed, but um, ideally we would be querying on this files page at some sort of rate, um, double checking pin status of all of these files. And if something's wrong, you would get an alert icon um, and a notification clicking on that icon would take you back to the settings page. And that is all. I, I have a question. Yeah. Are we going to take into account the you being offline by chance or is it going to error? Um, in the sense, uh, I'm not connected to the Wi-Fi, or I'm oh. not connected to the. I'm um, I know, in a cabin somewhere. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's a good. That's a good question. Um, we we have not flushed that out yet. Um, the question being whether the standard you're not online messaging that you get from the rest of desktop and web UI is that going to be enough, or do we need to say something specific to hey, we can't query these web services to to get to. Uh, Infura or whoever. Yeah, it's a good yeah. point. Well, um, I think more interesting is like if we can't get there, you probably want to redo it once you go online. Yeah, so it's, kind of maintain it's, some a, sort it's of a very good question. Uh, yeah. Be cognizant that those mockups were created before we uh, started discussion about uh, scoping between web, how much stuff will happen in web UI and how much stuff will be done in Go IPFS. And now we've agreed that the actual execution of the pinning at the remote service will happen in Go IPFS. So it's a very valid question that you've asked. Uh, what happens if like Go IPFS is not able to reach the remote service? I would expect maybe there will be some like spool or cache of pending uh, pinning actions, but there will be also uh, the pin status column. Uh, it will, uh, Web UI will ask Go IPFS about the status. And there may be a status of like pending uh, where you, it, you don't know if it's like applied remotely yet. Um, that's like a super, uh, super vague right now. We'll uh, talk with Jake and uh, core implementations about the details in the following weeks. But yeah, that's totally valid question. There appear to be an, enough affordances right now to be able to, within the existing design language, tell the user about that scenario. I don't see there being anything like earth shaking here, but yeah, you're right. It's, it's still an unanswered question. Uh, another remarks that I, or thought I had was uh, about the prompt where you see uh, upload all of them now, upload just the pins now, or uh, it might be a little, like some of those decisions sometimes are hard to make once you're in a service. So I was wondering maybe in the files UI, we could add a, I don't know, line or something instead to say, upload all the existing pins or based on options. That way you don't have to make the decision right away as you're adding a pinning service and you have a monthly play to get all the old stuff too. Yeah, um, that's, again, that's a good I, idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. I mean, it, it would represent some additional functionality, but. It will <laughs> also be uh, that we, that's you. <laughs> it may be that we actually don't need uh, to implement all those uh, models for different decisions because we may be constrained on the like go ipfs level uh, some things may be too complex to be like viable given our time frame so we may simply uh, be saved from <laughs> implementing that model um, yep and this is probably a good time. Yeah, I mean, we're we're still a little bit unsure time frame wise and functionality wise exactly how granular, if at all, we can get with that rulemaking. It might just be an everything or nothing right out of the box. But um, we are we are answering. Oh, and some of these are mandatory questions. But um, I just got the okay to turn this survey loose. Um, today, which is also on the agenda, but just talking about um, oh, I hate giving a real answer <laughs> on a live form. I can delete this one. But, um, but we're talking about potential pinning features. So um, we, are, we are asking how important is it to manually pin a file? Um, whoops, come back. Ah, type form. Automatically pin everything that's on your local node. Automatically pin everything that's in your local nodes MFS. Uh, a customized manual or automatic pinning rules on a per service basis, use a private service. And, you know, 
would this change your life? Um, also, uh, how important would it you be for this functionality to be available from the command line? So um, definitely we want to we want to get a beat on people's opinion of these functionalities and their importance in general. Um, again, this is probably going to be more limited by uh, the time frame that we're dealing with. Yeah, Ollie, you had a question. Uh, I was thought. just wondering how um, it sounds like these are the, the preliminary screen proposals they, I think they do a great job for for what you what you described it seem, it does seem like more functionality than we would want for a first pass yeah um, a yeah, lot of this like, is sorry just just that like the level of granularity yep. is both radical but also terrifying <laughs> yeah like, yeah this, this subtree is pinned to three of five pinning services, that subtree is pinned to one of five pinning services. Um, so some of this- even Just to be able to like render the status of each file, like yep. doing call outs to multiple pinning services per Expensive. file will absolutely kill us performance yep. wise. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah, I mean, and this is, a lot of this is aspirational. Um, and like Lido was saying, this, the mockups, which started out as iterations from the pinning summit were really can we can we build ourselves a most complex case scenario visually in the ui so that we're not boxing ourselves into something awful and have to rip out a bunch of ui later when we add functionality <laughs> yep 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 yeah uh, so just to uh, just to clarify on on the complexity we have uh, that like a working document where we try to identify, translate the uh, changes from the front, from the web UI, uh, trying to uh, translate that to low level uh, requirements uh, in both web UI uh, and Go IPFS backend. And we identified some scopes where different stuff happens in a different place. And uh, we've put a line in the sun here so uh, effectively, it may be here where we only have the manual pinning policy, that automa automatic uh, upload column. Uh, that's where most of uh, unknowns are right now. Uh, the uh, survey that Jessica shared will give us uh, data to know, is it worthwhile for us to invest time in basically implementing that column for MVP. It's not like we, we won't have that. We may not have that in the first version. Uh, we may have uh, something much simpler where you only manually mark a file or directory to be pinned to a specific pinning service and that's it. And that would be already super useful uh, for MVP. Uh, Pinning everything in MFS may be quite easy. So that's why we've put a line after that, but it's the line on the sand and we'll uh, finalize the decision uh, after we got a survey uh, results. Uh, yeah, I, I totally agree. We, given the time frame, we probably won't be able to implement uh, all the screens that Jessica shared, but that's, uh, that's something we may be at some point uh, available. It's not just yeah. for, not, not the first version. Yeah. This is mainly just an effort to be able to build in the affordances for future functionality. Um, conceptually understanding getting remote pinning services in desktop and web UI is like kind of a stretch anyway. And so to go and do that and then have to change the UI on folks six months in would have just been sad. Um, so I about, was... uh, about that, I have a question. Um, Actually, I'm new. Uh, so I remember in the previous conversations, there were some issues that we've been discussing about the current interface and stuff. Uh, and there was a, as I get, we tend to ship something and then iterate to improve it. Uh, is improvement somewhere in the pipeline too? And how the process will look like if it is, is unclear to me. Uh, given your smiles, I'm guessing the answer, but. Yeah, so like um, the pinning services themselves uh, in the current scope, uh, I think it's safe to say that 
uh, or actual execution of remote pinning will happen in Go IPFS. So that's sort of like out of the plate of this working group. We will uh, implement what's given available to us uh, over HTTP API that is exposed by, uh, by Go IPFS. Uh, so that's more or less uh, not a like the final decision or of what's available, it's not up to us. We will effectively implement what's exposed uh, in the HTTP API. Uh, and the final question would be uh, where those additional like pinning services are on the roadmap of uh, Go IPFS. Um, uh, sorry, maybe I reframe my question. So my question would have been, uh, are there opportunities to rethink the user experience of this in the future? Uh, and if there is how that process looks like of trying to improve it from the mockups that we were given uh, or or like is that the thing at all is it gonna be in pipeline is it something that needs to be I, I, um, I'd say just just a quickly that uh, I'd say we are in better position now that we know that go IPFS will be executing those remote calls so we don't have uh, a we are not like anchoring us our, uh, we are not anchoring the user interface around the code that we've wrote in the user land there will be a bit more generic api exposed in the http api and that means it will be easier if we decide to change the user interface or the user experiences it will be easier if we uh, now that we will have this generic API, then if we like tightly coupled everything in web UI, mm. but that's just like my uh, subjective uh, opinion, Jessica. Um, yeah, no, that's very true. That said, if you are proposing that we rip out to a substantial degree, what we've already aligned upon, we should track those discussions while we're also doing the development effort. Yeah, no, I'm not proposing anything specific. I'm just trying to understand because I think at the call with Molly, we all had some ideas how things could be better. Uh, and the feedback I got that, well, we want to do something really quick. And then as a startup, we're going to iterate over it over and over. So I'm trying to understand how this iteration over is happening in the future. Um, and and I, what, I, what I'm trying to say is that the basic the basic visual framework um, as we have right now is, is the, the very basics of that framework is aligned upon. If we want to do something substantially different than that, we should be talking about that now. Um, if we're talking about tweaks to uh, that basic framework, then, then we can sort of continue iterating on that. But if it's gonna, if, if what you're suggesting is that we represent it in a fundamentally different way, we should be talking about that now. Yeah, it's hard to tell what we call fundamental. I don't think any, there was anything fundamental, at least from what I remember in the conversations, there were some tweaks, but not. Yeah, I mean, if we're talking about things like icon design, you know, obviously that's, that's different than uh, we're not gonna represent things visually in a column or we, we're not going to use modals for config, things like that. So one of the examples I can remember, so one thing that I brought up during that conversation is instead of showing the cloud with a pin in there and then clicking a Dropbox uh, it to see the uh, dialogue with all the things that you pinned, uh, we were, I suggest maybe we can have something like what Google Docs is doing where at the top you see kind of little icons stacked to see who you shared the document with or who was on the document. So maybe we can have something similar in terms of who's is on, who's is pinning this file. Uh, I think Dropbox does a similar, well, yeah, they do the similar thing, but again, sharing with people. Um, uh, go ahead and open an issue specifying what you'd like to have mocked up, and I'll mock that up for a future discussion. Okay, thank you. Cool. Um, so that's pinning services only. <laughs> Hope that answers <laughs> the initial question. Um, Welcome back. Useful. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Half an hour later. <laughs> um, Familiar. Continuing improving file ads, directly. Uh, yeah, sorry. Am I? I'm trying to find where. Oh, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so I proposed a meeting at the core implementations uh, um, or asked uh, for the design review meeting and I'll try to schedule it sometime this week or next week, depending on people's availability. Mostly, so there needs to be some decisions made around uh, how we go about it. Well, one option would be to do everything in the browsers, but that would mean we will be doing more things. Uh, uh, or the other option would be to slightly modify the HTTP API uh, in non-backwards compatible way, but that would enable us to just use web APIs rather than trying to do the custom stuff. Um, Said and probably a few other things. Uh, uh, in the meantime, I started working on a patch that assumes that we we're not going to be doing HTTP API changes, but if we do, then it will like patch will be just simplified. Um, so I'm working on a couple of patches actually. Uh, so the problem is IPFS add uh, functionality in JS IPFS does a bunch of normalizations uh, and through those normalizations, some of the uh, capabilities are lost. So we end up buffering because of that. Uh, however, there's also peculiarity of IPFS add where it takes async iterator of async iterators which creates this double async uh, loop that is hard to create than specialized escape patches or hatches uh, to avoid some of the normalization. So it's becoming kind of like, I have a patch for that, but it's huge and massive and I don't know if it's helpful at all. Uh, so I have another implementation just, that just does add without any of that things, which is a lot simpler. So I hope to have by the meeting two versions and try to guide towards, uh, can we have a simpler one without necessarily integrating into the ad and see how it goes. This kind of had been my ongoing uh, conversations because I find that some of the APIs are uh, very generic to address all kind of use cases, but that also harms us when we are trying to not do all of those cases in browsers. Um, anything else? I think that's all for now. So I, I have a little trouble with web UI patch right now. If anyone is available later can help would be helpful. Uh, I, for some reason, bundler, I think is not picking up the dependency I added, but if you are available later, that would help. If not, I'm sure I can figure it out. Cool. Is it in a PR or is it just lo like locally? Um, it's not a PR yet, no. I want to get it to work first. I got like a wall of meetings, but maybe later <laughs> after P the wall. PR of first. PR early. It's okay to PR a thing that doesn't work. You just well, make it a draft yeah. and no one looks at it. Be brave, because that like... No, no, I, really I, I did some a bunch of drafts. So I want to get to a point where I feel comfortable with sharing. Okay. Really, but this, I'm happy to put it there. This is a safe space. You can share. Oh, it's internet. I don't know. Yeah, yeah it's true. It's super, super. I mean, you important. have to ignore the trolls. <laughs> it's super important work because uh, our peeing services work is useless if uh, it's painful to import files uh, to IPFS using IPFS desktop, uh, and that's the golden path we want to optimize yeah. uh, here. And Historically, adding files in web UI slash desktop is pretty gross for multiple reasons. Yeah. So it, it got better. Um, Raphael did significant improvements for like drag and drop, which got broken over time by Electron. Electron has this ability of breaking stuff. Yeah. Uh, we, drag we're, and not, drops. We're, not, we're not obliged to upgrade Electron. <laughs> Tray, they, they broke Tray on Linux, then they back, yeah. backed away from that change. So they broke it once again when people implemented all the workarounds. Uh, yeah. I'm, yeah, like I'm pretty skeptical <laughs> about the stability of Electron, but it, it is what it is. It's a, um, it is a difficult, difficult challenge they've set themselves. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, you're actually ping me later. Uh, or just open a draft and ping me. Yeah, I, I'll open a draft. I'm sure I can figure it out. It just uh, was the last thing that I was working on and I, for some yeah. reason it was not picking it up. Yeah, there's also like, uh, Rafael is uh, back uh, tomorrow and he probably he has a fresher look at web UI than I did. Um, yep. 
Uh, all right, we are at the end of our list. If there's anything uh, else, feel free to add. I'll quickly go over our highlights. I think, I'm not sure, you probably mentioned it uh, on other calls, but I'll just go quickly over them. Oh gosh, this Zoom sharing thing. <laughs> All right, so uh, Rafael released uh, Web UI 2.10 and it had a significant improvements for uh, accessibility. He effectively, I, I, I looked at that PR and he rewrote every interactive component in Web UI, like every link and button. Uh, so when you are using screen reader, uh, if you are like visually impaired or something, uh, you can just tab uh, the screen now uh, in this uh, starting from this version and you will get like pretty good uh, user experience uh, Rafael also like streamed uh, this on Twitch which is interesting uh, did a bit of information so it was really re really cool uh, to see how he struggled to rewrite entire user interface and if I did not tell you this you probably would not notice because he did such a good job of making everything look the same. <laughs> so he spent a lot of uh, time on uh, improving experience of uh, people with uh, various disabilities, uh, but it should not impact uh, the regular workflow and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, we kind of stabilized end-to-end uh, -end tests a little bit. And there was additional patch release where uh, a small uh, artifact uh, in Electron was fixed. And we have a companion release, which now lets you opt in into the latest uh, web UI. So instead of using the hard-coded CID that ships with Go IPFS or JS IPFS of your choice, you now are able to opt in into a version uh, at webui.ipfs.io, which is, uh, it's not the latest commit from master, it's the latest release as far as I know. So it should be fairly safe uh, to opt in. Uh, but we uh, we made it opt-in. We want people to use uh, the version that was tested with the node by default. And there is Arabic locale. In case there are people uh, speaking and reading Arabic and you find anything dodgy or weird in IPFS Companion, please reach out, fill the issue in IPFS Companion repo. It's the first language that's uh, from right to left, not from left to right. So we probably did not account for that in our user interfaces. So if anything looks wonky, please uh, let us know. Uh, yeah, those are short updates. And I think we are at the end of the meeting. Uh, so folks, unless there's any last second topic, I'll free up eight minutes of our time and finish sooner. How do Holly, do you, uh, Fido, we usually meet now. Do we still want to again? If not, we could, I can chat with Ollie and bring him up to speed on some of the UI stuff. Oh, yeah. Okay, if Ollie, if you've got time. Cool. For sure. Thank you. Right, cool. So I'm ending the call. Thank you so much. I, I, actually, I, I have one thing. Uh, yeah, go for it. Can I yeah, do sure. it all, off the record, though? <laughs> okay, so oh, uh, wow. thanks so much. See you in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Ending recording now. <laughs>